just this. He just sees this world, right? And the people on it. And we get to we get to Enoch. Enoch sees what? Everything. He sees everything. There wasn't there wasn't anything that God created that he did not he did not see. And he alludes to it with Abraham. He, Abraham's like uh sands of the sea. You know, he's he's trying to put he's trying to put picture to it, right? But we just talk about the you know the the grandeur of what God creates and how big it is. I love this statement. Do you know guys know who that is? I don't. His name's Carl Sagan. Ever hear of him? Yeah. Carl Sagan was an atheist. He was an atheist for the same reason that Darwin was an atheist. He just looked at religion and goes, religion. You know, Darwin was an atheist because <laughs> he was told that his family was going to hell if they didn't, because, you know, they never had an opportunity to accept God, right? To be fair, the, Darwin hesitated on publishing his works because his wife was a creationist uh -huh. and he loved his wife, so he didn't want to offend her. Well, and, and Darwin's just writing what he sees, right? He's just writing uh, what Darwin he sees. would turn over his grave, honestly, if he knew what, if he knew what people had done with his name. Uh -huh. The guy would turn over in his grave. Uh -huh. He was just a, he was just an observer observing stuff and writing about it, right? People took it and ran. Man, with just it. all of a sudden we got the evolution of man to you know that whole thing. And <laughs> Darwin's just like, I mean, uh, he was uh, he was Carl Sagan. He wrote the book Cosmos. You guys ever see the movie Contact, uh, where the the woman that's in the they receive a message from space oh, how to build a yeah, yeah, that, yeah. right? He was the one that he was the one that wrote produced that and. Uh, uh, but anyways, he was big into science, and uh, I'll just put this one back here. Anyone know what that is right there, that picture? I ruined the, oh, I had the slides in there. But that was taken February 14th, 1990. That's uh, Jupiter, or Voyager 1 is just outside of Neptune now. It's taken years and years and years and years and years to get there, right? And they're going to turn off the cameras, and he makes a request. He goes, can you spin it around Oh yeah. and take one last picture of Earth? And so they spin it around, and the the, the when the, he gives a whole speech called the pale blue dot, and he just talks about humanity and how everything that we know, every but every everything that's ever unfolded is just on that one little speck of speck of dust suspended in a light beam. He called it, and um, and the only reason I put that up there because of this statement he makes right here. Who wants to read this one for us? No. Let's have, uh, oh man, I already forgot your name, Jesus. Paige, sorry, Paige. How is it that hardly any major religion has looked at science and concluded this is better than we thought? The universe is much bigger than our prophets said, grander, more subtle, more elegant. And so they say, no, 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 my God is a little God, and I want him to say that way. A religion, old or new, that stressed the magnificence of the universe as revealed by modern science might be able to draw forth reserves of reverence and awe hardly tapped conventional fates why is that good and it is true he what he is saying the vastness of the universe and people have a tendency to put god in a box yep. and saying that oh no only god can, god can't do this or that he can only do that or this right well, i i love what he is saying there the habit of self our religion should be a religion that is what in awe it is a big god he is a god over light years and billions of light years and over creations that we can't even begin to fathom the number and years that we cannot begin to fathom the number our god is a big god that deals with big big numbers if we get if we get upset because you know hey the Bible says that the you know the world was created in six days, or it's only the history of the earth is only six thousand years, and we are so late. That's what he's saying. Our man, if there's if he can ever find a religion, I think he's died and he is. I think he found his religion. I think yeah, I think he got over there and go yeah, it was the Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones that worship a big God. 
and Moses is having that experience like, whoa, mm -hmm. God is big and he is powerful. And whatever I thought power was and whatever I thought big was is, well, it's definitely, is nothing. He's definitely bigger than all of the Egyptian gods combined. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, proves, he proved that pretty fast, right? The 10 plagues. <laughs> Jehovah proved that within one encounter. Okay, yes, right. Now, I want to show one more thing here before we end. I don't know what time it is. So. 826. All right, can we do this in four minutes? I guess fine. Four What's minutes. Four minutes. Are you ready? Look at verse six. What does Moses learn about himself in verse six? This is big. He just learns this about God, right? And then what does what does the Lord say to him? I mean, in his, I'm a similitude. You are a similitude of my only begotten. Only begotten. What does similitude mean? Likeness. Right. Right. It's in likeness. So let me ask a question then. In how in, in this Moses is the same as us. Now there's some specific things that we could go. Yeah, there there was a type and shadow in Moses in delivering the children of Israel that they're symbolic of how christ is going to deliver them spiritually right but there's also we're, we are also in the in the similitude of the savior in what sense we're children too. we're children of god so there's one what are some other things you think how are we in the similitude of god Become like him. Okay, we can become like him. Very good. Yeah. We're sons and daughters. Yes. A child of God. Well. Okay. So you guys have got that thing. Now you got to be thinking bigger. Yeah, well, I'm. Just... Are you, no, you're good. I'm just saying. Where we we can be like him. Yes, but in what ways can we be like him? Yeah. If man is nothing next to next to God, yet he cares about us because we are his, his children. And as we keep on saying, we have the potential to become him and to be in charge of just that much as well. Okay. So what did so what did Jesus so what did Jesus do? Or go ahead, someone online, Abby, go ahead. Yeah, so Jesus is the savior, and we have the opportunity to be saviors on Mount Zion in the temple. There's the big similitude, right? Just a savior come to save Heavenly Father's children. In similitude, our responsibility is to save them. to be involved in the same work. Right now, I love this statement. C.S. Lewis, you guys have heard this statement. C.S. Lewis, who wants to read this one, Jack? You got this one. It is a serious thing to live in a society of possible gods and goddesses. To remember that the dullest, most uninteresting person you can talk to may one day be a creature which, if you can say it now, you would be strongly tempted to worship. I love that verse. That sentence. Or it's a whore and a corruption such as you now meet, if at all, only in a nightmare. All day long we are, in some degree, helping each other to one or the other of these destinations. <coughs> It is in the light of these overwhelming possibilities. It is with awe and with the circumspection proper to them that we should conduct all of our dealings with one another, all friendships, all loves, all plays, all politics. There are no ordinary people who have never talked to a mere mortal. Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal. But their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. Immortal horrors are everlasting splendors. Is that not a great statement? I think it's more to like reading this whole thing. It's it's like a trinity, but also like it reminds us of we have to serve one another. Just yeah, you picked what you picked up what he said there. Yeah. We are either helping people to or from. away from it. Yeah. Mortal horror is kind of a strong strong, strong language, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess there won't be any in between, will there? That is our that is, in the similitude of the Savior, the Savior's job was to come and help us. lift and help and build people to that. And we have the same opportunity, the same privilege. 
we're going to end with this one here in one question. Who wants to read this one? Uh, Jason, are you a good reader? I'll try. Try. Read loud. There is a sentiment among many in the world that we are the spirit creations of God, just as a building is the creation of its architect or a painting the creation of its painter or an invention the creation of its inventor the scriptures teach however a much different doctrine they teach that we are more than creations of god they teach that we are the literal spirit offspring or children of god our father one what difference does this doctrinal distinction make the difference is monumental in its consequence because our identity determines in large measure our destiny. For example, can a mere creation ever become like its creator? Can a building ever become an architect, a painting, a painter, or an invention, an inventor? If not, then those who believe we are creations of God, rather than his spirit offspring, reach the inevitable conclusion that we do not have the capacity to become like our creator God. In essence, their doctrine of identity has defined and dictated a diminished destiny. Oh, I love that. Why is it for so my... what? Albert that? Callister? That's Tad Callister. Sorry. Yeah, I, I in a hurry. I need to go back and put the uh, that was a devotional they gave at BYU about five years ago. But Tad Callister is that. Now, you think about that statement there then. Why is it so critical to have a correct vision of this divine destiny of godliness for which the scriptures and other witnesses so clearly testify? Something that crossed my mind is whenever I'm creating something, whether if I'm painting something or if I'm trying to embed something, <clears throat> it very rarely turns out the way I intended it to be. There's always a difference. There's always like, oh, that'll work. There's always something, some, something unexpected that pops up. That's not so when God created us. He had mm. the exact image in mind. He knows how we were meant to turn out. Right. Yeah. The difference between God and how he viewed, you know, his his vision and his his love for a world that he created versus his children. Mm -hmm. It's two different things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think going along with that, knowing what our destiny is supposed to be, we are not, we're not merely agents to be acted upon, we are to act ourselves. And so, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to sit back and be miserable because God did this to me. God created me, now he has left me in this mess. Whereas, no, Mm -hmm. They are here to become like him, and we ourselves have power and destiny to become like him, and we need to learn how to act. Yeah. Our, our understanding of that, with that increased vision comes okay. the motivation. If we don't know, yeah, please go ahead, Abby. Oh, I think this was kind of already mentioned, but um, yeah, I just think that if like we understand like our power to create, then we're like more um, like we're willing to like take that risk. We're willing to like expand our minds. We're willing to just like, as it was said, act instead of just be acted upon or like told what to do. Yeah. I mean, if God can create so many like amazing things, like does it? That means we can too. Right. Right. Yeah, but but I, I but make sure I want to make sure we understand. There's a difference between what he his creation in terms of what he made with his hands, and what we are in terms of being his offspring. Mm -hmm. Right. The earth can never become like God. him. His children can become like him you can grow get educated and create businesses but your businesses will never become you. like you your children offspring will 
<laughs> that can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? But there's the similitude. It's the, the motivation. And I think here, as we get into the rest of the Pearl of Great Price, it is a book about us understanding and being motivated to become more like our Savior. And it all kicks off right here. And just these first 11 verses of, hey, here's the, why did Joe Smith go back? Why did the Lord have Joe Smith go back and, and look at this and revisit this? Because it is critical. Man, imagine if the world had Moses chapter one. It would be very different. Why did Satan not want that in there? The coincidence that that's missing. The plain and precious parts that are taken. There is one of them. And what's the, what's the price that it's, that it's it's had on on uh, people's understanding through history and what a blessing it is for us to man to be motivated by the fact that we know that we are children of god and as we get into the rest of this it'll it'll be awesome good job guys man i've kept you longer than i wanted thanks everybody for being online amelia tommy sam wise thank you abby Carissa and Katie Rose, thank you. Let's have a closing prayer. We're going to have to end it there. And um, let's see, someone online want to, how about, Amelia, do you want to offer that for us? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we could learn um, a little bit about Moses 1 and the Pearl of Great Price and that we get to spend this semester diving deeper into it and better understanding um, our identity and your workings. Please um, bless that we will be able to apply these teachings in our lives and um, come closer to thee and have a greater measure of thy power in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you. Amelia, are you still going over there with, um, are you still meeting over there with uh, Jeff Fowler? I think he got called as mission president yeah, to Romania. Just, yeah, I was wondering if you knew that or not. But yeah, he just got called to be mission president there. So is that where Paul is? No, he's in Albania. He's in Albania. Is that close to Romania? He's doing so good out there. I don't think so. Armenia? Paul's in Armenia. Paul's in Armenia. Oh, Armenia. Yeah, Armenia. 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 <laughs> hey, if you want the link to the website, there it is. I, I just put the slides on there. I take all the pictures out because I don't want to get dinged for copyrighted pictures. So I take all the pictures out and just put the quotes in there. So if you do, it's a weird, it's not a paid site. So it's just got the Wix site da, 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 on there. But if you go to the very top, it says Institute stuff. And I've just made a file that has, uh, it has the uh, uh, pearly great price. And I'll start, I'll start adding other books because I kind of get time to do it. So. Okay. Or you don't have to go and look at all because it's honestly interesting. Hey. Thank you so much for doing that hey. and thank you for the lesson. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for your participation. Yeah, thank you. That was good. See you later. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night.